Hey everyone, my name is Matt Yoakum, and I am back here again today with Pro Sound Effects. Uh, today we're going to be doing a much requested topic for the tutorial, uh, and that is the topic of sound design for sci-fi. Uh, sci-fi is a genre that immediately comes to mind when you think about creative use of sound, um, because we can really get super creative and push the limits of what's possible and come up with new things that people never could have imagined. Um, and you know that might cover everything from creatures to space spaceships, crazy weapons, lots of fun stuff. There's so many different things to explore within the entire genre of sci-fi, and it's basically the sound designer's dream. Um, so, you know, I'm super excited to bring this to you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it. This is going to be part one of two in the sci-fi design uh, tutorials that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, and the reason for that is that when I work on a piece of sci-fi, really any sort of genre film, but especially something like sci-fi, I try to break up the design into two phases. The first of which is going to be what I basically just call the sound design phase, where I'm basically, I make a list or I understand the different elements within the film that are gonna need bespoke design. And then I will basically create a fresh palette, if you will, of sounds to then work from to build into the film. And so the actual editing of those sounds into the film is phase two, uh, which is where we lay stuff back to picture. So in the design phase, I typically don't work to picture. I don't try to put stuff in sync with picture unless it's something really specific. I try to just explore and think of it almost like a sandbox of like trying random things, trying crazy things, designing with stuff in mind mind, but really using it as like an exploratory phase to generate lots of content that I can then use. And in doing that, you're essentially creating, like I said, like a palette, you're creating, uh, if you think of it like, like a painter would work, you're essentially choosing the colors and the tones that you're going to be painting with in order to, you know, lay everything down on the canvas to create a painting that looks cohesive, right? We're doing the same thing sonically, we're creating a bunch of elements that might be used and repeated or layered into different things so that you have a cohesive sort of feel to the world that you're building. So that's kind of the logic behind that is, is to break that up into two phases. The design phase is the exploratory and the editorial stage is when we take those elements and actually put them against picture in sync. And, you know, obviously continue to build on those sounds because you may not have nailed it perfectly in the design phase or it may be partially the way there uh, and you need to like add some toppers or sweeteners or whatever you know whatever's necessary to make the final sound sound the way that you want it to um, so yeah uh, you know we're going to be exploring the first of the two phases today we're going to be going in and uh, doing sound design for this clip that was provided to me by pro sound effects which will get into in a moment. Um, but importantly, I want to mention that today I'm going to be using Pro Sound Effects's Core 3 standard library. And this is actually a bundle of over 30 different libraries from Pro Sound Effects. And there's 38,000 sounds to choose from in this library. So there's tons of content to explore, tons of possibilities. Uh, it's really a great set of sounds to work with and it unlocks the creative potential in, in discovering and you know finding inspiration for this kind of sound design. So we're just gonna jump into it and have a lot of fun. Okay guys, so we are here in my design template. Uh, this is a template that is really set up to be streamlined exactly for this process, for the process of doing sound design. Um, you know, it's like, I don't really want to often try to do lots of like heavy design work inside of a large edit session, just because the large edit sessions can be really cumbersome with all the routing and the plugins and just the overall session size. Um, so, you know, in here, it just gives me flexibility where basically up top here, uh, I have some common instruments that I like to reach for, like soft synths and samplers and whatnot. Um, and then I've just got regular mono and stereo audio tracks uh, and all of these feed through a bus master, which has um, 
uh, some like but some summing processing that I can do to it if I want. Uh, and then it just feeds into each of these print tracks. So I can lay in content up here, hit record down here, hit numeric pad number three to actually run the record, and then I'm done. I've got my idea down. Um, so it's just kind of a useful streamlined way to set things up to be efficient. Um, uh, and, you know, I guess we'll basically get started. So Pro Sound Effects chose this uh, sci-fi clip for me from the movie Tron Legacy. This is a really fun, like, combat scene where, you know, they're using these sort of, like, energy weapons. They're, like, living in this digital domain. And when people, um, you know, get hit and essentially, you know, killed, uh, they sort of pixelate and like get ground into dust here uh in kind of a really fun stylistic way i'll just hit play on this all right it looks really awesome plenty to do here lots of action you can see more of the uh exploding particle effects there so definitely lots of fun stuff to cover. Uh, for the sake of efficiency today, I'm actually just going to be covering design on two things. Um, and I'm actually going to be showing you like two different ways that I approach the design for material like this in this session. Um, you know, everything's obviously kind of a process. The thing I'll just also, there's a few things I'll mention up front, like one of them being, you know, going into this, like, so like I personally don't have like I've only seen this movie once, so I don't have like a super ingrained, you know, idea of like exactly what this stuff should sound like. I just have sort of, you know, my general sci fi knowledge of what this stuff may or may not sound like. But when you're going into a design session like this, you'll have met with the director or you'll have met with your supervisor and you will definitely be given specific direction on what you know the client is or is not looking for in these designs so you know in this case here i'm really going to be sort of winging it and just coming up with stuff of my own but um you know you'll be you'll be guided along with specific instructions on what to do so i'm going to take my best guess at what some of this stuff would sound fun like uh, the two things that we're going to be concentrating on are going to be sort of the power up sound for this uh light ring here that is sort of like light sword if you will um and then the i thought it'd be really fun to show how i might cover or do some design on the uh, particle disintegration stuff so uh, i guess we'll just jump to it I'm going to open up Soundminer here. I've already got my PS Core 3 standard bundle loaded. As I mentioned before, this is what I'll be using today. Um, lots of great material in here to uh, grab from and explore. And I haven't like super prepared this ahead of time. So I'm just going to go through this the way I would if I were approaching this for the first time. So let's just start diving in. I have Keycaster on, by the way, so you guys will be able to see my uh, keystrokes as I'm typing down here. And hopefully that'll, you know, if you have a question about, you know, some sort of a shortcut I used or something, you should be able to, uh, you know, see the see the keystrokes down here on the bottom left. Hopefully that's helpful to you guys. So, yeah, so when I start first start uh, looking for search terms, you know, I'm I never try to be like super, super specific. Um, uh, in terms of my search terms, you know, I want to try to type in things that either emotionally relate to what I'm looking at or more often than not, um, some sort of like metaphorical equivalent of like what might be related to the sound I am trying. So if I type in, you know, digital light ring sword from Soundminer, it's probably not going to pull anything up that's going to be useful, if any search results at all. Uh, you know, and the idea is not for me to find this thing pre-designed. It's for me as a sound designer to come up with a brand new bespoke design. So, um, you know, like the first word that would come to mind when I'm looking at this here would be energy, which is a pretty common uh, search term. Um, You'll see I've actually got some uh, search results that have already been searched here. That is because uh, I've actually already recorded this tutorial and due to technical difficulties, uh, it failed. So I'm kind of doing this over again, but it's still gonna be really uh, serendipitous. So it'll be fine. In fact, I'm gonna leave that part out. I'm just going to quit Soundminer, reopen. 
fresh search terms. Okay, so I've got the PS3 core here, PSE core three here. Uh, the first word that comes to mind when I look at something like this is energy. So here's the uh, anime library. It's got lots of fun stuff, but it'll have lots of fun stuff for, for us in here. I like this because this actually has like a lot of natural movement in it. Uh, I try not to find sounds that are like super static or steady. Uh, I, I like to find things that have like organic movement in them. And that actually just brings me really quickly to another point that I was going to make, which is, um, you know, I really like to design from real sounds or organic sounds as a source. And that doesn't mean I can't ever use synth sounds as a source. Like this example is from a modular synth. Um, at least it sounds that way and I assume it is. Uh, but when you use especially like soft synths in software, um, the problem with some synthesizers and synth sounds in general is they tend to be pretty perfect like exactly what you program to get out of the synth is what you get and there's no sort of like randomness or like organic texture that you get from recording real life things and of course in some sense you can program in some randomness but you know you're always going to have more of that sort of natural and real tangible feel from real recordings so a lot of times what I'll do is for something like this is if you've got to make something sci-fi and sort of digital sound is to start with something uh, organic as the root source and then process it in a way to make it sound more digital and you'll get something much more just like tangible and 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 uh, present and and real sounding something that'll tie you and make this world feel physical and real so anyhow I'll, I'll try to demonstrate that as I go uh, but let's look for some more sounds here that's a fun sound. Kind of a fun sound. It's almost more of like a door closing sound, but I really like it. I'm gonna just see if there's a way to use it, and if not, that's cool too. But it's a good sound. I'm typing in energy. Obviously, most of these sounds are gonna be pretty digital um, and synth based, but that's okay. I can ov obviously switch up my search term here in just a bit. Those are some great uh, electrical zap sounds. Those are probably great for like the actual edit for the combat scene and stuff. It's kind of fun. I wonder if you reverse that. See if we try that out. I try not to choose too many sounds that are like already fully designed, like already a full fleshed out idea. If anything, I try to grab chunks and pieces of those types of things if I find an interesting element within a sample that I like. But yeah, the goal here is to try to use mostly like source material type stuff to build something new as opposed to just uh, leaning on a pre-made thing. Let's try, um, let's try electricity. I 
That's great. Uh, my colleague here, Christy Abold, does some amazing work. Um, he's obviously processed this stuff with probably with a specific design in mind. Um, he does really awesome stuff. I like how thick that is. It's a little too digital sounding for this, but. You know, I like this sort of texture, this like clickling, clicking, crackling texture. Let's see. Actually, let me. I'm gonna type in crackle because I kind of like the idea of it finishing with something like that. Not wood. I don't want fire though. You'll see I'm obviously kind of randomly clicking through here. I mean, this is a lot of the process, honestly, is there's a ton of serendipity built into this, like stumbling across the right sounds and coming across happy accidents is just a big part. Um, you know, often like we obviously start with an idea of what we want when we go into it. Um, at least you hope you do. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. But um, you know, the goal really is to allow yourself to be open to hearing new sounds that maybe you wouldn't have considered using before. I like that. It's another digital sound. We're leaning a lot on digital sounds right now after I just talked about not doing that so much. But as long as we build rhythm and texture into it, I think we'll be OK. I do want to still get like a crackly kind of. No, that's radio stuff. It's kind of fun. This little chunk right here. I'm always looking for elements, too, that are, I think I just mentioned it briefly. I, I, I always like to look for elements that are, um, have, or have, like, rhythmic in nature. Like, for example, um, I'll show you this one more time, and then I'll actually uh, put the picture away, because I, I typically don't design to picture when I'm doing this sort of thing. I like to kind of do, like, wild stuff, and then later in the second part in the edit process is when I'll fine-tune sync and stuff. Um, but, you know, like, his light just kind of turns on, so we could just do a ping of it turning on, right? Like, come up with some fun synth sound for it turning on. But I think sounds are often much more intriguing when there's a rhythmic quality to them. They stand out in the mix better. Um, they just feel more dynamic that way, more interesting. And so you can actually, even though, you know, visually this thing is just going from off to on, uh, we can actually get away with quite a bit of rhythm built into it. So maybe it has kind of like an LFO thing as it, as it grows in power, as it like, you know, over the course of it turning on, maybe there's like an ignition sound and then the sound of it coming on. So it's a kukum or a tukum, and as opposed to just boop and it's done, right? We often want to try to like elaborate on the sound and maybe make it sound more interesting and dynamic than maybe what the visual is giving us. Um, so anyhow, I've got some elements here. Let's try. Um, I'm just curious if I type in gizmo. Nothing for gizmo. Let's try gadget. It's like some UI stuff, maybe not what we're looking for right now, but um, how about, um, I wanna bring in like a, uh, uh, a realistic, a real recording element. 
Mechanical. These are like heavily designed things. <laughs> Maybe a cuckoo clock is exactly what we're looking for. Um, you know? Even just this. As like a go I like to, to be the initial kind of starter hit. Let's find a couple elements like that. Looking around in here. Here's some more like designed elements. The designed elements are amazing if you're in a rush and like you really need something quickly. Uh, I'm just trying to go about it a little bit more. Um, like I want to build something from the ground up with some more like construction material like stuff. You know, actually, that's kind of fun. I bet we could do something with that. So I'll bring that in. Let's do one or two more elements. Almost done. That's kind of fun, nice and rhythmic. So since this is a mono file, what I'll do is I'll spot it to a mono track and then I typically will duplicate it down and then uh, bring it down into stereo. So this is what we call us like a dual mono or a you know stereo mono um, track, and that's because if I apply like plugin processing to it, I want to be able to have stereo effects on it. Because um, I'd always prefer to design wide and then in the edit like narrow it down, so I have the option and my hands are never tied. I think I remember these. I used these in the horror tutorial, actually. You know, let's try, um, since we're doing an energy sword, let's try just a sword. Let's do a sword shing, which is kind of the the sound, something like that. That first one's nice. That's nice. It's kind of your typical sword draw. I kind of like how this one's a little longer. It has some nice character to it. All right, we've got plenty to play with here. Let's start uh, putting these pieces together. So, like I said, I kind of want a rhythmic, like a chikung of it coming on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use this little uh, transient piece here to be the beginning. Um, that's not gonna be the sole sound by the end of it, but uh, we'll start there. And then let's just start listening to the layers I pulled. Okay, so everything here is gonna be a little bit louder than was. Here we go. So this one would probably be, I'm actually, sorry, I'm gonna turn off the video now. I'm gonna store this up here. Um, I do wanna say at the outset, you know, I know I've said this in other tutorials, but I really don't want you guys to worry or obsess so much about what specific plugins I'm using. Um, really like, the best designers all use different sets of tools. Like I may reach automatically for something that somebody else may never use uh, and vice versa. They like, I have friends that use stuff that like I just don't know how to use and probably just 
like this is the tools that I have and this is what I know. So this is what I'm going to do. And you guys should honestly think about it the same way. Don't be so obsessed. Um, you know, obviously, if there is a plugin here that you think looks cool, most plugin developers offer free trials. So feel free to try stuff out as you like. But, you know, there's also there's a ton of different pitch plugins, there's a ton of different delay plugins, there's a million phasers and flangers and all the things that you can think about. So, you know, just don't get so caught up specifically in the plugins I'm using. It's more about the creative process of exploring uh, and trying different things out that I'm after here more so than, you know, using a, a particular plugin set. Um, but this, this, I want it to sort of sound like it's rising in tone. So it sounds like it's powering up if you will. It's a little thin. I might just uh, start it lower an octave and then just end it where it started, actually. Switch the mode. Oops. Something like that. Maybe just scrape a bit of top, top end off of it. I'm curious what it sounds like an octave lower too. Not so good. Let's stick it with it there. So this, that little chunk, I think I'm going to use as part of the like, the initial startup sound, if you will, like the trigger of the thing. I'll just stick these up here together. Um, And then so I don't hear that sound duplicated, I'm gonna cut that out. I guess I did, how about now? Try like this. <laughs> well, I still got the laser sound in there, but that's okay. There we go. So the interesting, I'm gonna move these out of the way for a second because they're kind of in the way. Um, the interesting thing is it sounds like it's going down. I kind of want it to go up. So I'm curious about what this sounds like reversed. That's cooler. I like that. This is a fun sound. Um, actually, same thing again, like, I like that. I think the, the sound of it coming on should be relatively short. That's nice. This one, I'm gonna send this one to RX. Uh, there's a fun trick I like to do inside of RX. Um, or a module I like to use rather, I should say, uh, is this deconstruct module. Um, basically, it allows you to choose between noise content and tonal content. Um, and this is a, a fairly tonal sound. Um, so I'm gonna turn down some of the noise on it and actually increase some of the tone and see what that gives us. Okay, so before, after. So it may sound like it's muffling it, but I'm more thinking of it in the context of this overall, you know, built out design and not just as a standalone sound. Um, and that I think serves our purpose when when I'm designing, I really try as much as I can, depending on the thing that I'm making. Obviously, I try to lean more towards tonal sounds than noisy sounds. And the reason for that is like um, when music is blaring and dialogue is happening and all the stuff is happening at once. Uh, tonal quality stuff tends to punch through a mix even at lower volumes it tends to be easier for the ear to pick out versus just noise like if you have six noisy things going on it's hard to identify between them if it all has a lot of noise content but if you have you know six tonal things happening that are all happening discreetly uh throughout the mix it's much easier for the ear to like pick those out and so there's a better chance your sound survives 
a noisy track. Um, so keep that in mind. Tonal content is sort of where it's at for me. This I might also use as like part of the trigger thing, maybe just that, yeah. So speaking of which, let's take a look at this. Let's um so one thing I'm doing, you'll see here as I'm like sort of lining up the transients, I want the transient material. These two aren't as transient as this one, but I want it to just sort of um, be cohesive. I don't want a lot of flam. Um, let's try this. Uh, let's see, I got a few more elements down here. Well, so far, let's see, let's see what just these top four sound like, and then I'll get to these in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna mute this top guy. Because I don't want it to be a super hissy sound and the only thing I'm getting out of this is kind of that top end hiss. I'm not getting much of the lower t like rising tone. Um, so this sounds a little bit cleaner to me. Sort of, there's a high element, there's a mid range element, kind of a glowy thing to it. Let's see. Now I think it needs some texture and I think it'll need a little bit of low end. So let's see what I got here. So that's definitely the texture I was talking about. I kind of want to have just a few like little sp sparks at the end after it's lit up as if like, you know, it's got a little bit of an unstable power source to it. Um, this I'm going to process to sound digital. So I'm gonna use Fab Filters Saturn 2. Because uh, in the effects section, there's this fun uh, module called Smudge and it does some like granular processing. Um, and so I'll start with it all the way down uh, and then I'll turn it up uh, so you can hear that coming into effect. Right? Um, so somewhere like a happy medium in there is going to be sort of fun. Okay, so I like that. Um fun sound. And then I'm going to open up um, L2 is just a maximizer basically. It's just going to crush everything, give it a little bit more, more weight, make it feel more present, louder basically. And I think I'm going to speed this up slightly. Cool. So this will be sort of the end of the sound, like it's finished extending. Um, and I am going to, I do want to hear this an octave down as well. Um, doesn't sound amazing on its own, but I'm going to use our bass and give it some like 70, 60 hertz ish. Hmm. Actually, no, because I think that'll be more like low end noise content. I think I'll do a specific low end thing. Okay, so this I was actually really quick. Um, I'm also going to make this sound sort of digital. I think I will use. Sorry, I'm using my plugin list over to the side here. Um, I want to hear what this sounds like with a GRM delay on it. Uh, this is a really fun delay plugin.
So that's kind of fun. So that I would absolutely give some loan. So I'm actually going to use, um, there's a new plugin from Boom called Uberloud. It's like a, it's a, it's another maximizer, but you can split into three bands and then give it some like distortion quality that I really like. I tend to use uh, the three band in this like mid push setting here. Um, I'm going to turn down the wet gain. Give it some low end. So like we go from this bypass to this. It's kind of amazing. Um, and then I think this would be fun too to just hear like a put this in transient mode. Just here. Could give it like a fun kind of a LFO oscillating. And again, this is made from a real recording, so it's like it's got all the texture and the randomness of the real world built into it. Um, it helps it not sound totally digital, even though we're processing it to sound pretty digital at the end here. Um, so let's just see. It may get lost in the mix, that's okay, we're just trying stuff out. This is another element. You know, we may even have enough elements here to like split this out and do two of them, but let's just hone in on one of them for now. Um, when in doubt, flange. Whoops. Somehow that didn't allow me to hear the processing. But the flange adds kind of that digital flair to it a little bit. Um, it's kind of a fun one. Uh, I could probably even follow that up with a phaser. I don't know. Let's just see. Just having fun. Right. Yeah, why not? Um, and I might just to hear it, see what that sounds like an octave down. Yeah, it's kind of more interesting six or six semitones down. And I think I might reverse it too. Right. So we've got a lot of sort of similar sounds going on now. Let's just see how this sounds. Okay, so it's it's going on a little long. I think the sound needs to be shorter and more concise than this. Um, also doing gut one, which I kind of wanted to go to you know, not have this gap in here. So I'm going to tighten this up. That's better. Let's see what happens if I mute that guy. So that's fun, but we're missing the sort of power up. This guy needs to... I'm cautious about overly pitched things starting to sound cheesy, but... Let's do this an octave down. It may help take away from the, the sort of corniness of it. Especially if I put it just a little lower in the mix and feature another element a bit more.
What does this sound like reverse, just out of curiosity? Not hearing this at all in the mix. Okay, so that's actually, you can see, I mean, this is the process is like going through and just hearing what sounds are working and which sounds are not. And not every sound that you choose and process is always gonna work. This is starting to work, but I think it just needs a low hum, like that classic kind of whoom sound to it. So I, oops, I'm going to type in hum here. And basically the first thing from Colossal is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm gonna throw this in and shape it. Cool, I think it can have a bit more of a tail. That's fun. I wonder if we even pitch this up an octave. Uh, not in transient mode though. It's actually more artifacty than in voice, but that kind of is fine for this. And then I wonder if I put the electricity back. So I'm gonna try to shorten all of these just a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, these bottom elements are a little stereo wide even for this part of the process, so I'm just gonna uh, narrow these up. And I think the tail might be a little long, again. Just out of curiosity, if they just do a slight pitch. That's kind of nice. Yeah, because now I feel that low end, like the rise in power. And I'm you can see I'm doing a very subtle pitch shift. So it doesn't have that kind of cheesy, like woo type type sound. Obviously, you know, exaggerative, sorry, but that sounds pretty fun. So I think that's like a good option that I would present to the director. What did I just get rid of here? That's really fun. I just like this sound in general. Sometimes, that's actually part of the beauty of this sort of a design process. You may just stumble across a sound that's on its own, like this was this sort of rhythmic um, mech thing. And like, that's just a cool sound on its own. Like I may not even need to tie this into this or the particle thing. I could just actually store this. Um, it's a little short, like I would have, uh, use like a longer, I think it might've just been from this. What did I process it with? Uber loud? Oh, okay, so that was to add to this thing, but. Anyways, um, it's fun to explore and come across random happy accidents. I mean, that's so much of the process as you can see here, like even if you have a sound in mind, actually getting to that sound really just involves a lot of happy mistakes and experimenting and playing around. So don't feel frustrated or overwhelmed if you feel like, I don't know how to get to that sound. Like play, layer, mute, retry, reprocess. 
um, just experiment and have fun and literally think of it like a sandbox where, you know, you've got all of these sounds built into, you know, a library like Pro Sound Effects that you can just play around with and experiment. Um, there's no rules here. Uh, in fact, breaking the rules that you think exist often result in some really happy accidents. So um, I'm going to mute this track just so I, we don't hear it doubled up when I'm recording. I'm going to record arm. And then uh, I'll typically make my selection um, just so I don't record too little or uh, too much. And I'll hit numeric three. And there we go. Here's our printed sound. It's just running through this bus. I'm not doing any processing to it right now. Um, but the, the one thing I'm going to want to do is that once I print this down, I'm going to put the show code for this. It's pro sound effects underscore my initials space dash space. And then uh, from there, I'm going to type in the description of the thing. So in this case, we are doing an energy light sword. And then I'm probably going to tack on to the end of that uh, some other descriptive words that would make it easy for me to find in the library later so, or stumble across it again. So sci-fi... Uh, weapon, um, I may put like synth, since it's got some synthy elements in there. Um, and then I would command shift K is going to bring up my ability to export this. Typically I'm working in a 96K session, especially in sound design, because when I bring in 96K samples, I want to be able to manipulate them fully, but just for the sake of recording this tutorial and the audio and everything, I'm working on a 48K sample session. Um, if I were working at 96K, I would want to export at 96K. Um, but in this case, 48 is fine. Uh, so then I'll choose my directory. Uh, in this case, it's in my sound effects library. I have show codes for all the shows and all the stuff I've worked on. In this case, I've already got one for PSE. I'll hit OK. I'll export. And now it's stored in my library. And I've got SoundMiner set up to basically watch that folder. So if anything new shows up, it'll automatically uh, prompt me to ingest it later um, for use once we get to the edit side of things. So, um, yeah, I think next we should talk about uh, the process for going about the particle design. Okay, so now we're going to do the pixel disintegration design. Um, you know, like we see these people sort of explode into sort of pixelated glassy dust particles, right? It's like a really cool particle effect. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, let's start with searching for glass and see what comes up. That's kind of fun. Um, I have an idea for that. Let's do... Let's do glass debris. It's a fun explosion, not what I'm looking for, but. There's some fun stuff in there. I kind of like some of this material. This is actually from a buddy of mine from um, from college, Colin Lechner, and I went to the same school. Um, 
Let's see. Again, I'm gonna like double up that mono recording. that it's got some nice tonality to it mr. Richard King Okay, let's try let's try let's try particles would be an interesting search term for this. That's really fun. Some more great material from Christia Bold here. You know, as I'm listening through these sounds and trying to think of what I'm going to do with them, like, I, I am thinking of ideas of how I want to process. This is why it's, like, there's obviously a lot of stumbling across fun solutions, but it is really important to... It is really important to understand, like, have a, a mastery and a, a deep understanding of all the tools that you have at your disposal so that you, like, when you are listening to sounds that are raw, like this, unprocessed and undesigned yet, right? Like, pre design, I guess I should say, um, that you already have, like, some ideas of where you want to take it. So when I import something like this, into our session, um, I've already got like an idea of where I want it to go because it's not going to be what it needs to be until I'm done with it. I like all the like textures and pops in that one, so I'm actually probably going to replace. Eh. I'll just keep both. All right, so let's just process these and see what we come up with. Um, got lots of similar sounding stuff, actually. Like, I'd probably try to go for a little bit more variety normally, but, um, you know, for the sake of time, let's just process these. So this first one I got here. Sorry, quite loud. Okay, so I just, I think it's going to be about that range. Okay, right around 5K. Yeah, it's just a little loud. Just going to shape it just a little bit. Okay, okay. So the idea I had here... I was like, this is a fun, sort of smooth drone thing, like synth sound pad, if you will. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to bring in LFO tool from Transfer Records again, because I love this thing. Um, and because they're falling into like pixels, just to take it literally, you know, I'm going to use more of a square shape. I'm just rounding the edges here a bit so I don't get clicks. Um. Like that's kind of fun. It's still probably, I'm going to actually just process Pro Q3 here.
Okay. That sounds kind of fun. So I'll print that down. Um, I'm going to consolidate that down there. So I can rename it as a solid file. Um, but I also might try... Like, this would probably be fun with some uh, flanging on it. So let's try that. Let's do the Avid Flanger again, because this is just a solid. It works really well. And that's fun, too. So just another, like, very similar variation. I could take it a step further, I guess, just so it's not so similar with just like one more effect added. Let's do... Let's do Saturn again. Let's just see what it sounds like if we um, run through a couple of these different effects, see what it sounds like. This is Smudge again. some fun stuff in there but none of it's like super grabbing my attention is perfect for what we need oops you know it might be fun to like process this and then stretch this way out just like to the point of breaking it and distorting it because why not Run that through Uber Loud, and I bet you get some really cool. I should do that just for fun, even though it's unrelated. I mean, this, this is the beauty of it, of like the experimenting, is sometimes you just come across something unintentional. cool sound into me um just gonna stick that down there just to keep it just because it's a cool sound i try to never throw away a cool sound even if i'm not going to use it immediately i could absolutely want to grab for that in the future um so you know just never know uh, but let's try the other direction we were going i, I liked the kind of like up and slow kind of like a fun like delay sound there because of the granular processing from saturn And I'm gonna, again, I'm going to just sort of tonally shape this real quick. You know, who knows? This may be useful. I don't know. Let's just see. So I'll store that down there. There's not a, you can see there's not a particular order. I'm really just, I'm just keeping everything down here so that I can rename it later. I do tend to keep these, um... Uh, muted until I play them back just so I'm not accidentally hearing the stuff underneath. So let's just move on real quick to the next uh, processing here. So here's this uh, glass breaking. Sorry, quite loud. 
So I think this will be fun to run through a different kind of granular processor. So there's this company, uh, Yuhi, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. They make the Ubic G. They make a ton of effects processors, basically, but um, I really like this granular and pitch shifting uh, module. Um, and as you'll see here, like I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start playing around with the parameters with no real end game in mind. I'm just going to see what I get until it sounds fun and then go from there. So there's some fun stuff in there. I think I'm gonna record some of those like glassy textures. I'll just go down on a free track here, record arm. This is the beauty of the template. Just go down, record. And now I've got that thing recorded. If I blow that up, you can see the waveform. Um, and then I can keep playing with it. Like those textures. Let's try this. Okay, fun. Um, and that's the fun thing too about like if, if you when you use an insert like this, uh, I'm gonna just color the track so I can you know I just remember that's where I put you know this plugin is once I've got that set, I can just drag any other sound that we chose uh, onto this one. Turn it down a bit. I think that's already kind of fun. It came from this. Right? So we went from glass breaking to fun digital granular dissolving human, hopefully. Didn't mean to record it twice there. And we could try it again in another setting. kind of fun. It's kind of video gamey sounding, but who knows? It could turn out fun as like a as a layer underneath when they get hit. Okay. Um, and let's try Let's try this. I'm going to try uh, the GRM delay again because it can be really fun. Um, GRM delay.
that's kind of fun. That'll be like a good, like the particles hitting the ground. So what I could do here is I probably want to, because they sound a little heavy, I may want to pitch them up, maybe speed them up. Like that sounds pretty fun to me. Um, and then it would also be fun just for, just to hear what it sounds like. Again, like just experimenting here. I duplicate this over, I do RX connect. I'm gonna try this deconstruct um, trick again of like just keeping the tonal stuff. Let's just see where it gets us. Could be the best thing ever, could be absolutely worthless. Let's just send that back. I'm just using a, a macro I have set up on my um, stream deck there to do that. Nothing fancy. Okay, so let's um, do L2 to like get this louder and compress so it's not as meek sounding. It's kind of fun. It might even be fun to run this also through the LFO tool. That same sort of, uh, I can just do a sine wave this time, it's fine. Mm, the square really does work better for this. It's pretty fun. Curious what it sounds like. Kind of like it where it's at. So I'm just going to copy that down here. I'm going to consolidate it so we can rename it. Just saves time over reprinting it since it's already processed the way it is. And then well, let's try one more thing. And I've got, let's see, I, 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 I guess we can choose between these two files. Let's see. So I've got this. And this. So two very different ones. Just out of curiosity, let's just throw it here and see what it sounds like. Yeah, so not really feeling that one in particular. Um, but maybe. Let's do, uh, let's try this. Let's try waves. Let's try the, uh, they have a really fun meta flanger stereo. I'm just gonna, again, I'm just gonna play with the parameters and see what I come up with. Let's see what it sounds like over here on this one. Just compare, because this one's so noisy and I'm not hearing a ton of the flanging.
So I don't know if that's doing it for me either, honestly. I mean, there's definitely some interesting stuff happening. It just doesn't feel as like slick as I think the visuals look. Um, so, you know, maybe it's worth trying this on something else that we tried already. There's definitely some fun textures in there. I kind of liked it on here too. Like that just sounds fun. Don't know how or why we'll use it, but it's a fun one, so I'll just keep it around. Sound design is supposed to be like this really creative, fun, exploratory art, right? Like, you know, of, of course, there are certain times when like you see something and you're given a direction and the director may know or you may know exactly how you want that thing to sound. And that's cool. But more often than not, especially with genres like sci-fi, uh, we get exposed to these like very exotic, foreign kind of new ideas that we may not have come across before. Um, or on the flip side of that, you get an idea that you've seen done a million times, but your goal hopefully is going to be, okay, how do I take something like a light sword, which has been rendered a million different ways that we've seen and heard in all kinds of movies and figure out like a unique new thing that you can bring to it. Um, and that may be a concept that comes from the director. It may come from a concept that you pitch to the director or the, or the supervisor, if it's just something you think of. Um, you know, there's so many different ways to like approach this, but the goal ultimately is to sort of, at least in this phase of the process, is to kind of like let go and experiment and come up with some new fun sounds that, you know, you haven't heard before and that just sound cool and excite you and hopefully will also excite the filmmakers. Um, and the last piece, I guess, that I'll add on to the end of that is that, you know, even though you may spend hours doing this kind of work in this kind of a session, uh, you know, if you bring it into the movie and it's just not exactly how you remembered it, or it's just not working out, or the aesthetic has shifted, or whatever reason, don't freak out about it. It's all good. This is part of the process. I make sounds all the time that don't end up getting used in the movie that I make them during. Like if I pull up, you know, a design session from a particular movie and I make something, I may only use a few of those sounds, but I'm going to now have a whole library and a bank of other sounds at my disposal in the future. And there have been so many times that I have wound up on a new project and go, I remember I made this thing from this other project that I didn't use that is perfect for this. It happens all the time and it's super satisfying because it's still something that you poured your time into and it's still something unique from you. So, um, you know... Don't give up. Don't be discouraged if the first take isn't the right one. Learn how to like let go and come up with lots of different options for things and just have fun with the process. I mean, that's my favorite part about it. Um, so yeah, you know, and then of course it always helps to have amazing source material. So absolutely go and check out the bundles from Pro Sound Effects. This today's, you know, sound design was all done using the sounds that I found inside of uh, the Pro Sound Effects Core 3 Standard Library. Um, that particular bundle, like I said, has over 30 libraries in it. So tons of fun stuff to pull from, as you could see, as I, you know, clicked around in Soundminer. Um, so go check those out. They have different tiers, different pricing, depending on how big or small you want that library to be. Um, and uh, just remember to have fun with it and let me know if you have any questions and we will see you for part two.